Hello, this is Hector Vladimir. Today I'm going to give you a tour and my comments, an explanation, and some details on the solar house, solar home that is on display in the TELUS Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. The form of the home the model that you see on your screen right now is actually an older model it is the original I believe the original home from the Cartersville Georgia Telus Museum and again this has been updated this home here is no longer the same although it is almost about the same size as far as square footage it is very different as it is right now this is uh, this picture here was taken in about 2012 it was September of 2012 to be more exact and again it has changed before in those days they did have a solar water heater as you can see here that has since been removed they had an electric AC unit or air conditioning unit that sat on the outside and it was model R410 Alpha a Mr. Slim from Mitsubishi they also had a set of batteries or a battery bank it appears to be a set of about uh, eight batteries the batteries were quite large and heavy I believe and they appear to be lead acid or flooded type batteries they had the solar panels up on the roof most of them and they were tilted apparently to the south I forget the number of solar panels I believe it was over 20 panels up on the roof they also had insulation all around the front of the home and I believe it was also very advanced or at least very unusual and hard to find materials space age materials they called it I say they uh, the people that did the tours they do still do and did in those times tours of the home and explained and told you some of the details in the construction of the home and they said those insulating panels and uh, areas there that you see in the front of the home this area in white are made of space age or space agency grade insulation material that is very very difficult to heat up and to have that that material transfer that heat the same as with the cold this is a view of the museum itself as seen from nearby the house again this is another view of the home or house and this was back in 2012 I used to look I believe that in 2012 this home was completely off the grid I could not tell you 100% this was the case what I believe I remember them saying just that unfortunately I don't have any pictures of any area where there may be a meter if you know about this home and it being connected to the electrical grid back in 2012 please let me know but with the evidence I have and with the explanation I received in that year that time this home I believe was off the grid 
and it's entirely running on solar energy. And the evidence I have for that is the the very large battery bank, the lack there of evidence for any kind of meter or power meter from the grid, from the utility grid, grid being connected, and also the large amount of panels here in the front area. I believe the panels on poles are not used for the home. They're used for the, I believe they say it's for some sort of area within the museum, I believe to be a planetarium area. These panels on poles may power the planetarium. Unfortunately, this, these here are all the pictures I have from September of 2012. The pictures I'm about to show you coming up are from 2019. And as you can see, the house has been vastly remodeled. As you can see here as we read along, the West Virginia University solar style house. Uh, style means sustainable technologies integrated and learning experience. So as you can see, it says this house was completed in 2015 in, a, in the 2015 Solar Decathlon, an international competition of solar powered houses from various universities. The house was a collaboration between the University of West Virginia and the University of Rome, Tor Vargata in Italy. The students designed and built the house for the two week competition in Irvine, California. Telus rebuilt the house as a permanent exhibit structure on the museum's campus. The house combines design elements from both cultures, a large open living area, and an even larger outdoor space for both inspired, are both inspired by Appalachian architecture. Its dominant structure, the arc, is a symbol of Roman architecture. The energy efficiency of the house involves a number of elements, 36 solar panels arranged over the house, passive cooling, insulation, around the entire house, monitoring controls, and energy efficient appliances. And to go forward, this again is in 2019, I believe it was summer of 2019, more accurately it was August 3rd, excuse me, August 30th. Nope, I take that back. It was October, actually, fall of 2019, October 14th, 2019. Again, you can see the home has been remodeled. They have still the panels with the poles, the poles. Uh, they have several panels. There are several poles with panels there, about three or four, I believe, within the area. But then again, these power the planetarium and the museum. They have nothing to do with powering the home. This is a bit of a close-up of that paragraph or set of paragraphs that we just read. Here are some of the details of this actual home. It gives credit to the supporters and the people that made this project possible. As you can see, some of them are anonymous.
some details here the arc holds 36 solar panels each panel is rated at 285 watts with a total maximum power output of 10.26 kilowatt per uh, or for the array an instrument called an optimizer in each panel allows maximum output per panel regardless of whether other panels are underperforming because of shade or malfunctions the solar panels follow a curvature of the arc this ensures that some of the panels are at the optimum angle to the Sun throughout the day this configuration also provides maximum shading from the panels output from the solar panels goes through an inverter that converts it from DC to AC current the current is then fed into the circuit breaker panel there is also a service line from the electrical grid again there is also a service line from the electrical grid that can send power in either direction from the grid into the house and from the house back to the grid if excess power is being produced by the solar panels that power is fed back to the grid causing the electric meter to run backwards and generating a credit on the electric bill and this is the, the points of this presentation my friends I'm sure many of you have either visited this home or known about it or known about a project or a exhibition more or less like this one but my point is here that this home was one at one point off the grid completely off the grid and completely ran powered by solar energy but now it is not as you can see here now this is connected to the grid and it only sends power to the grid when excess power is being produced I do not believe this home as it is has a battery bank as it has a grid connected system and that is disturbingly sad this is another of those signs that tell you a few more details about the home the appliances in the home interior anatomy just to read a few of the details HVAC and ventilation there are two sources of cooling and ventilation designed into the house the first is a passive system using a solar chimney the second is a mechanical heat pump system both systems can work separately or together to maintain a constant and comfortable temperature. The passive system, a solar chimney located directly above the central living area, works with two floor vents connected to the cooler, a 25 inch to 30 inch high crawl space underneath the house. When the chimney is open, hot air rises and exits the house via the chimney, natural convection then pulls in cooler air through floor vents from underneath the house so the passive system is apparently just a construction or a method that doesn't require any kind of moving parts or machinery it is basically a hole in the meter in the middle of the floor looks like or vents and it draws air from under the house which usually stays cooler and the convection uh, the convection of air basically that uh, circulates around the house keeps the home cool just to uh, continue a mechanical system the mechanical system is an external heat pump with three independent air handlers inside the house that provide heat and air conditioning and I will show you that system 
or part of it in the next few photos. B, tankless electric water heater. This tankless, tankless water heater provides constant hot water on demand. It is more efficient because it does not waste energy keeping water hot in a tank when it is not needed. Being electric, the heater is powered by the solar panels on the roof when the sun is shining. That is the key word, when the sun is shining. When it is not shining, then they leave it open for interpretation, but it, to me, that means that it is drawing power from the grid. C. Flooring. The house has three types of interior flooring. The shawl metallics and the wood planks flooring. A little bit of a plug in there, a commercial plug-in for those companies. Uh, which is composed of 22% recycled PVC. And the carpeting is 100% 100 recyclable. Not necessarily recycled, but it is 100% recyclable. Kind of odd there and deceiving language. D, appliances. The appliances are part of the Energy Star program. Something that's probably been around since the mid-1990s. The most successful, the most successful voluntary er energy efficiency effort in history, according to the EPA. Lighting, all interior and exterior lighting use, uh, uses LED bulbs. Not much of a surprise there. LED or LEDs use 80% less energy than and last 25% longer than incandescent bulbs. Not a huge surprise. And this is a diagram of the passive cooling system, which is the solar chimney, what they, as they call it. Basically draws air from a crawl space through a hole or vents up through the house and into what they call a chimney. Simple system, perhaps works quite well. and the flooring, the appliances, which are high efficiency, lighting, and I believe this is the water heater, the tankless water heater. Another view of the house and some more details here. Peek into the house or the house's a skeleton. The house's structure is based on three recycled four or forty by eight by eight foot steel shipping containers with additional steel supports and steel arches that hold the solar panels. The opening underneath the grates in front of you shows part of the house's steel base. Steel is a sustainable product. It is the most recycled material on earth, with 88% of scrap steel being recycled. Most steel products use 66% recycled steel. Recycling steel saves, or recycling steel, saves energy equal to what you would power 18 million homes for a year. This is the interior of the home. They have a large screen TV, large screen TV, and there's some signs with some information. Energy efficiency, the West Virginia style solar house was rebuilt by TELUS using everyday energy efficiency solutions coupled with advanced techniques to make the house sustainable and practical. These elements include ample insulation throughout the house, Energy Star certified appliances, natural lighting, and shading from solar panels. Some of the house's unique elements include insulated windows. The windows surrounding the front half of the house provide a panoramic view of the outdoors. They also allow ample light to filter into the room. The windows are made of high-performance double glass. The windows exteriors are coated with a 3M sun-controlled window film that lets light in while reflecting 52% of the sun's heat 
and blocking 99.9% .9 of UV light. The lighting system, all interior and exterior lighting uses LED bulbs. LEDs use 80% less energy and, 25, and last 25 times longer than incandescent light bulbs. Unlike CFLs, they contain no toxic material, thereby reducing harmful waste when they are disposed. The lighting is controlled by a monitoring system that responds to the natural light coming from the house. On bright sunny days, the interior lights turn off as natural light floods the room. When it gets cloudy or as the sun sets, the interior lights can turn on. Flooring. The house has three types of interior flooring. As I mentioned before, blah blah blah, 22% recycled polycarbonates. The carpeting is 100% recyclable. The solar chimney. There's some more details on the solar chimney. It is located in the ceiling directly above the central living area. It works with two floor vents at either end of the building that are connected to a crawl space beneath the house. In hot weather, hot air is drawn from the house, out, is drawn out of the house up through the chimney. Natural convection pulls in color, cooler air from underneath the house through the floor vents, lowering the ambient temperature inside. Again, all these are pictures from 2019. These are the panels that are up on the arches, I believe. Can't really tell details on those panels from this pic from this photo. These are the panels that are on poles. It looks to be about eight, six, twelve panels per pole. So this house is basically a winner of a competition but it is by no means a affordable home. It is by no means a home that is accessible for most people. It is by no means something that could be built and constructed with ease, or, or with relative ease, with accessible and easy to find materials. Steel is basically a material that can be only used by very large construction companies for commercial and industrial use mainly. Steel is very rarely used for residential applications. So this home is not so much as it is built, not so much for residential use. This looks more as a commercial building. This looks and it is, uh, the cost of it is for very wealthy and powerful individuals or groups, entities, companies. This is not for your average working person or family. This construction, the cost of it is prohibitively high for the average American, North American family, let alone for the average world family. So this is not an affordable home or accessible home as it is. The home from the 2012 pictures, which I showed earlier, is a much more affordable home. It was at the time that we saw it, $250,000, which was not a, by any means affordable, not at the time especially. Even today, that would be a more of a higher end, upper middle class and above type home. This right here, I would guess, I would venture to guess is a home that would take about $500,000 to build. You know, utilizing and applying these arches, that architecture, the steel construction, uh, 
uh, would take a lot for someone to gain those materials, work with those materials, get those curves manufactured, and do the installation of the equipment and all. I'm sure even using, you know, the containers as they said, uh, they used steel shipping containers, three of them, and plus all this expensive glass. This is by no means an affordable home let alone these rails with the steel cables. This is underneath the home. As you can see, it has many, many columns, bases there that are look to be adjustable, look to be made of uh, the heavy-duty PVC. I am not sure if they are filled in with any kind of material like concrete, but this is how it looks underneath on the crawl space. These are some of the vents that lead to the crawl space that allow the air to come in. As you can see is steel construction settled on concrete blocks it looks to be a bunch of concrete blocks this is the rear of the home as you can see there is a power meter and power cables so the cables look to be underground One of the rooms has a panel for display and this is the air conditioning as of 2019 it is a different air conditioning it is a carrier it's no longer the Mitsubishi Mr. Slim and it is as you can see connected to the grid it is connected to a panel which is connected to a meter this is a net metering meter There is a decal with some instructions there. This is for the air conditioning unit, I believe. As you can see, the floor has plenty of vents to allow air in. I believe there are vents also above ground. some more of the tubing exposed there on the bottom the panels and that is all photos for 2019 okay very quickly I wanted to compare before I move on to the 2023 photos want to compare the two structures from 2019 from 2012 excuse me from 2012 and then the one on took the one I took for 2019 as you can see these are two very different structures they are very similar in size however one of them is a lot more affordable you can guess which one the 2019 structure is much more buildable constructible much more affordable much more much more accessible and again it is cheaper uh, as I said, it was priced in 2007, I believe, when they first designed it at 250000 In 2012, it was priced about the same price, according to them. And that was basically the estimation of all the labor materials, all of the equipment, everything included was about that much. This home right here with the steel construction with the with the arc construction and with the container the container construction the shipping container construction and the larger amount of glass used this home is very likely to be about double 
I would say about double what this home construction costs would require. As you can see, the door is a very standard glass door, metal and glass door. These windows are very standard and small. And the panel uh, construction doesn't really take a whole lot to build such an array. Again, it's a rectangular array. Doesn't require any fancy steel work. As you can see, this house does. And the main thing, the main difference, which again is a disturbing finding, is that this home right here was completely off the grid and this home is not. I don't know what happened between this this year and this year but probably and more likely the powers that be finally made the people at the museum uh, fall under pressure or bulk to pressure and finally hook up this home to the grid. not sure if it's to basically not to give the public ideas about being disconnected and being off the grid or if it was a financial decision or if it was any kind of other decision you know as to technical limitations that this home had they wanted to expand here and to expand to what they wanted they basically had to connect to the grid I'm not sure what happened but I believe this structure right here is a step backward. It is devolving. It is going back, uh, retreating. It is not advanced at all because this home right here, again, was off the grid, working from bad from batteries entirely. These are the 2023 photos. Again, they have not changed a whole lot from 2019. The same arrays exist on poles. The house looks pretty much the same. I don't think much, if any at all, has changed since 2019. Now in 2023, it is the same construction, the same home with the steel containers con uh, constructed or built stacked together there's a better look at the inside as you can see it has uh, very large glass panes all around the front the living room area is quite spacious it looks to be about a two to three bedroom smaller home maybe about 1200 1100 square foot, maybe less. As you can see, the appliances, the stove is quite small. The range, it appears to be electric. The range does not appear to be gas or LPG as it should be. It appears to be electric. living area quite large and open to the outside a very little if any privacy no curtain work no blinds so whatever goes on inside of this home is completely exposed to the outside during the day and even at night even more at night I would think because the interior lighting Another view to the side, another view from the outside showing the large wind turbine in the background. This is a view of that AC carrier AC unit connected to the grid utility connected panel.
another view with that. This is a 230 volts or 208 to 230 volts single phase 60 hertz AC unit. As you can see, it is by no means a very low voltage or wattage unit. It is a 0.1 horsepower fan motor. It could draw up to 253 volts. So the minimum circuit amperage that you can have is a 35 amp. A fuse would be 50 amp. So this is by no means a high, very high efficiency. Even though it's considered good efficiency, it is by no means a very high efficiency unit. It is a, when it comes to tonnage, for those that go by tonnage, it appears to be a 3 ton or 36,000 BTU AC unit as seen here in the details. So it is by no means a small or very high efficiency air conditioning unit. So you can see the solar panel still in that room some of the materials there on display perhaps some of the materials used to make solar panels perhaps silicone and carbon again some of the details for the house the new style which again I was disturbed to learn that it is no longer connected or it is no longer operating as an independent and off-grid home. Thank you very much. Have a great day.